Up to this point, we've used the development tools on embed.org for everything. That's creating a project, editing, compiling, and running. It has other facilities as well, such as the ability to share code and look at documentation. But it also has the ability to export your project for use in one of the professional level tools, such as Keel Microvision. And that's what we're going to do now. Now the export step we've done for you. And uh, I'm going to show you how to obtain a template project that you can then use and modify for the purpose of this course. So if you're a Plymouth student, you'd go to dle.plymouth.ac.uk. If you're not a Plymouth student, have a look on the iTunes U course for information about where to obtain the source files. So for Plymouth students, we go to the current module and there's a section called embed and we have here nuclear application dot seven Z. So this is uh, an alternative to the zip format and it's very uh, efficient at compressing these particular types of files. So I'm going to save that on the desktop. Now that takes a little while, so I'm just going to pause the video while it does that. Okay, that's now downloaded. And you now need to extract that. So if you're in the lab at Plymouth University, we would right click 7-zip, extract here. If you're not and you're at home, you might need to install one of the free tools for extracting 7-zip archives. Again, this takes a little while, so I'm just going to pause the video. OK, so once that's finished, you should have a folder here called Nuclear Application, which is a starting place for a new project. Open that folder, and you'll see a green icon, Nuclear Application. Double-clicking that will open Keel Microvision 5, which is the version we're using at the moment. Now, in the lab, that can take a little while because it might need to communicate with the license server. If we're using the free evaluation version, it might open a bit more quickly. Again, I'm going to pause the video until this is done. OK, Keel has now opened, and I'm looking at some of the source code in this project. And it's a very simple blinky application. It just flashes an LED on and off. It's now quite safe to delete the 7-zip archive as well. Now I want to close this one because we'll look at that later. So what we've got here is an integrated development environment. It's an editor, it can build, it can help you debug, and a lot more. So let's have a look and see what it does. First of all, we need to build our code. And the first time you do this, it needs to build the complete project. So what we've got is main.cpp here, that's our code essentially. And then we've got a whole load of other files which are actually part of the embed environment. So to be absolutely sure, the very first time we do a complete rebuild. Now that may take some time to do. Uh, on my machine, it's about a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna again pause the video to uh, speed this along a little bit. Okay, so the build is completed. And at the end, you should see the word linking, and then a program size, and hopefully, if all has gone well, zero errors. You might get a couple warnings. Um, I'm not totally sure why they're there. They're, they're part of the embed library. Okay, so now that we've built it, we're uh, ready to run the code. But I just want to show you one more thing before we do that. And let's say I decided I didn't actually want this printf, so I commented out. I save. Now I don't have to go through the whole rebuild process again. In fact, I really would emphasize you, you shouldn't. If we go to this button, which is just build as opposed to build all, that will just recompile the files that have changed and then relink everything together to make it executable. To be sure that you don't keep hitting the wrong button, uh, if you look, it says that the shortcut for that is F7. So instead of clicking that, I suggest you just press F7 every time you make a change and you want to 
retest your software. And as you'll see, that was a lot quicker. Now, to make this easier, I'm going to maximize this window now to give you as much screen space as possible. So we can now do what we did before, albeit a little bit more seamlessly. I've built my code. I can now go to here, load, or F8, to download this code onto the embed board, which will basically write a, an executable program into its flash memory, like so. And now we see the LED is flashing on the embed board. So we haven't done anything here that we couldn't do before. But let me illustrate some of the things that you can do in microvision that you can't do at the moment with embed.org. Okay, so I'm going to illustrate a point by modifying this code and inadvertently bringing in a logical error. Now a logical error is one that the tools won't help you with, where the, you've met the rules of the language and it'll compile and run, but there's just a mistake in your logic. Let me show you. Int LED state. Okay. So I've created myself a variable to keep a, a record of what state the LED is in. And I'm going to assign the value of that to the onboard LED, like so. I'm then going to wait, and then I'm simply going to flip the LED state to the opposite. Now, quick tip, if you type LED and then go control space, I can just pick the correct word and hit return. Save you a lot of typing. Okay, let's just think this through. So we assign the LED state to the LED. We wait, and then we set LED state to its binary inverse. So if it's a zero, it becomes a one. If it's a one, it becomes a zero. I can save that. I can rebuild with F7. Don't rebuild everything, just build. There we go, no errors, no warnings. So yes, we have no syntax errors, and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that the code is correct. So I'm gonna show you one of the debugging facilities that will help reveal the logical error I've just made. And to do that, I'm going to introduce you to something called a breakpoint. So on the left-hand side here, we can click and add a red dot. And this is called a breakpoint. What does it do? Well, when I run the code in debug mode, execution will pause at line 10, where it says onboard LED equals LED state. It actually pauses before that line runs, so it's ready to run that line. It's easier just to show you. Right, so I've rebuilt the code. I don't need to click load. I need to go to debug, start, stop, debug session. Or you can press control five, or if you look at that icon, you might find it's on your taskbar as well. So click that, and this will now deploy the code and execute it, but it will pause on the very first instruction that it meets. Now, here's some of the code that you don't normally see, at least on this module you don't. Um, and that's the assembly language code that runs before your code does, sometimes called code before main. We don't really want to look at that now, so right click and close. I want to run and stop on this line. So the breakpoint's there, so we can go to here, where it says run, or simply press F5. Okay, but the yellow arrow's appeared. So that's saying this is the next line that's going to be executed. Now, we're assuming the LED state is zero. What is it? Let's hover the mouse over it. It certainly is not. That is a 32-bit value with some arbitrary data in it. Now, I happen to know this was going to happen because I remember that local variables, variables declared inside a function, don't have a guaranteed initial value. For speed, they're not initialized. They, they've got in this, what they store is whatever happens to be in that part of memory. So the first mistake I've made is I've forgotten to initialize my variable. So let's stop the debug and fix that bug.
Okay, we could be tempted to just debug again. Let me show you what happens if we do. No complaints, it does everything it did before. Press F5 to run, and we should hit the breakpoint. Again, hover over the variable with your mouse to inspect its value. It's still there. This is because I made a very common mistake and I forgot to rebuild my code before I debugged it. So make sure everything's saved. Press F7 to build. OK, everything's now up to date. Now I can debug my code. I'm purposely showing you these mistakes, by the way, because I know from experience we all make them. Press F5 to run to the breakpoint. Hover over the variable, and we can see its value is zero. So this is good. So as I step through this, well, setting the LED to zero will leave it switched off. Now on my particular setup, it doesn't bother to step to the list line, the wait line. It seems to want to step over it to force it to. I'm going to shove a breakpoint in there. Okay. And now it wants to run this line. It wants to toggle it. So current value is zero. As I execute that line, I would just press F10 on yours. You'll see that it's now got a value of one. So it's flipped state. So now I can step line by line. We assign that and uh, we see that the LED has now switched on. We wait. LED state is currently all one. We've now toggled it back to zero again, and we go back around the loop, and it goes on forever. If I wish to just let it run, I can just clear all breakpoints and press F5. And now where we look, we see that the LED is flashing as before.